Well, welcome to another glorious fall day. I don't know what we did to deserve. I actually do know what we did to deserve a fall like this, which is that we endured a miserable spring. Uh, it's all payback now because we've just been enjoying such a beautiful, beautiful fall here. And I hope you have been enjoying a nice fall as well. We're back in the vegetable garden for one of the final times of the year because it is time to harvest the ginger and turmeric. So last year I grew ginger and turmeric for the first time in my raised beds. I had grown them before in containers more as ornamentals, but I was so thrilled with the harvest I got last year that I sort of decided it was going to become a regular part of my garden rotation. So I've grown them again this year, but this year I grew them in a different way. So last year when I grew turmeric and ginger, I started with seed, essentially tubers, right? You get these tiny little pieces, they're called fingers off of the hands, which is the name for sort of what you're gonna, we're gonna dig out of the ground here in a second, of both ginger and turmeric. And you start them early, like January, and you start them in a seed tray um, with just a little bit of soil. You keep them over heat, and then you, once they sprout, you transplant them to like a four inch pot, and then sometimes you have to transplant them even another time into a larger pot before it's time to plant them out. That is an enormous amount of time. The other problem with this is that I have found um, one very good source for seed, ginger, and turmeric, but there is a, it's very hard to get there in um, Hawaii. Uh, it's very hard to get and they have a minimum order and you have to sort of be on your game and order the second they open up orders or else you're not gonna get anything. And the minimum order is enough that last time I grew it last year, I had enough to give to probably 10 other people and it was more than they can use too. It's, it's meant for, I mean, these kind of minimum orders are really meant for people who are growing this, um, you know, to sell or commercially in some, in some way. I'm just growing enough to play around with and have a little bit for us. I mean, honestly, we haven't, we didn't use what I all grew last year. So that presented two problems for me. One, I was spending way more money on this. Um, and I mean, I guess you could go in on a big co-op with people on this, but I was not using anywhere near what I had to buy. But the bigger issue for me was the time commitment in order to grow this because starting something in January is about the earliest I start anything. Like I don't even start seeds that early. So that, start, that means that I am in my basement, under my grow lights, tending things starting in January. And honestly, I'm not interested in doing that. It is a huge time commitment. Not to mention that by the time you're potting these up into four inch pots, uh, now you've got an enormous amount of space taken up in however you're growing this, which means it's less space for the other things I wanna be starting. So it it's enough to make me not interested in doing it. So I'm on kind of a quest to look for ways to simplify my gardening life because sometimes I feel like I make things more complicated than they need to be. So this year I ordered ginger and turmeric plant starts from Junk Seed, who is sponsoring this video. The idea behind this was that I don't have to waste all that time in my basement and all that space in my basement caring for these plants over the entire season. They did come early enough that I did have to grow them on uh, for a short period of time inside, but it was like a month maybe, maybe a month and a half, something like that, rather than starting in January, which ends up being like five months of tending these plants. So the day has come to harvest these. You can see the ginger has turned yellow and gone floppy and been probably nipped by just a slight bit of frost because I still haven't had a real severe frost here. But we're gonna dig this up and I've got turmeric to show you too. So I did grow fewer plants this year than I did last year. And that's all because last year I planted more than I needed because I had more than I needed. So it's super easy to harvest both of these. It's just a, a fork works great to just sort of pry it up. And we've had a lot of rain in the past week, so things are pretty moist here. I'll have to get the hose to sort of, but you can see, see that beautiful ginger coming through. So I've not had ginger or turmeric flower for me either time that I've grown it or when I was growing it in pots. And I think it's just maybe not warm enough here and our season is not long enough for that to happen. Um, it doesn't, I mean, I'd love to see the flowers, don't get me wrong, but it, it's not really critical to harvesting some to eat. 
Before I get the hose and rinse those off, let me get the turmeric that's in here so that we can just rinse them off all at once. Okay, here's the turmeric. Now this, I have to admit, was not growing in probably as much sun as it should have been. The end of this bed is actually a little shady. Um, this is actually where you know kale grows really well in this bed. Uh, so we'll see how this harvest is for this. Oh, these plants look pretty robust to me. Okay, so here's my ginger harvest, which I would say is about the same as I got last year uh, per plant. Um, yeah, this nice, young, fresh ginger is so yummy. Um, so that's where I would, I would say about the same as last year in terms of per plant. Like I said, last year I grew way more plants. The turmeric is a bit of a different story. Last year I had a great turmeric harvest. And what you're looking for here is these kind of light orange little nodules. What we have here is a lot of roots but not a lot of these little edible tubers, which is different from last year. Now, maybe that has to do with the fact that these weren't in like full sun. Uh, maybe it's where I grew them. They were in a different bed last year. Maybe it was something about how I grew them, or maybe it was just that those plants that I got were not as mature as the ones that I had, you know, taken care of all those months. But good thing we've got some more term work to go check out. Okay, so now we're over here in the main garden, right off uh, the patio, right by the house. You can see some of the dahlias are still looking great over here. Um, but we're over here because one of the things that I discovered when I grew turmeric last year in the vegetable garden was that it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous plant. It looks very much like a canna, uh, leaves foliage wise, but it was not attacked by Japanese beetles like cannas tend to be, at least in my area. So I had sort of thought, you know, this would make a great substitute for a canna in a garden where you want that bold foliage, but you don't want to deal with the Japanese beetle damage. And if you don't care about the flowers, which honestly the canna flowers do very little for me, they're okay, but I don't love them. So usually when I'm growing a canna, I'm growing for the foliage, not the flowers. So I tucked three turmeric plants over here in the garden. So we're going to dig those up. Maybe those look different. We're going to see. So this first one is kind of the most exposed one, which you can kind of tell because you can see that this one got a little frosted. The others haven't. And I would say this one also was pretty much covered by various plants and didn't see a lot of sun itself. So I'm not expecting this one to be that big, but let's see. Okay, I actually do see some fingers on there, but let's keep going with the rest and we'll rinse them off at the end again. So ironically, the one that I said probably wasn't going to do that well was the best of the three of them by far. Maybe even the best that we harvested this whole time. So you can see these, um, you can see we've got some nice little tubers here, nice little, nice little fingers in there. Here's the other two. Even though the foliage on these was bigger, the tuber formation was worse. My theory on this is that both of those were planted basically within the canopy of the limelight hydrangea right behind me. My guess is big shrub sucks up more of the nutrients, more of the water. I mean, theoretically, if you're trying to grow a plant to, you know, get a lot of roots on it, you don't want a lot of competition. So maybe that's a lot of competition. So overall, my turmeric harvest was definitely lower than last year's. Little tip, we didn't eat hardly any of it. Uh, I liked growing it. I thought it was a beautiful vegetable to grow. I never found something to do with the turmeric that I really loved with the fresh turmeric. I mean, of course we could dry it and I do have a dehydrator and then you can turn it into a powder, but like, I don't think I grow nearly enough to even go down that road. So I did sort of shave it and we used it in a few recipes. Um, but I didn't use everything I had last year. I just happen to think it's just a gorgeous plant. Now the ginger will use all that. Um, but slowly, I mean, we don't eat, I just don't have the culinary expertise to know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with these things. That doesn't stop me from growing them.
So did this method work for me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the ease and the convenience of getting this as a plant rather than starting my own was enough to make me grow it again. I honestly don't think I would grow ginger and turmeric again if I had to go through the whole seed starting process again. That's just me. I just don't feel like tending something um, that long. And you, especially for me, for something that I grow a little bit as a novelty, I mean, it is kind of fun to bring people into your garden when they say, what's that plant? And you say, oh, it's ginger. And they go, what? You can grow ginger in Wisconsin or you can grow turmeric in Wisconsin. I find that fun. I think it's interesting to show people when they come to see my garden that, yeah, you can play around and grow almost anything anywhere. You just have to kind of work the system a little bit. For me, this is a great compromise in terms of ease. I think the longer I garden, the smarter I get about how best to use my time and resources. And this is just an example of how things might have changed over the years.